a reminder, during their updates, all media lines will be muted to ensure you are all able to hear the information being provided clearly and without interruption. Following the update, we will open it up for Q&A where we will do our best to get to everyone's questions. As a note, when we do open it up for Q&A, our moderator will unmute. Thank you and good afternoon. It is a, a pleasure for me today to be on the call with uh, my colleagues uh, in Nassau County and Westchester County, uh, Laura Curran and George Latimer. Um, all three of us uh, have worked uh, incredibly uh, closely together uh, throughout this pandemic, but I will tell you going through this uh, crisis uh, and this unprecedented event that uh, we have uh, experienced, it. Uh, it was, uh, for me, always comforting to know that uh, I had uh, two outstanding partners to be able to work with uh, and to be able to contact and just exchange thoughts and ideas right from the start. So I really uh, want to welcome uh, George uh, and Laura to the call. I'm going to introduce them in a few moments, say a few words, but thank them uh, for their great partnership and their leadership during this uh, really, again, unprecedented experience and event. There is no playbook for this. Uh, this is all, uh, as we go along, we're literally on the fly, uh, making decisions, getting things done, figuring things out, and having the ability to uh, work with uh, two great partners like Laura and George uh, and to be able to bounce those ideas off and, and share experiences has been critically important throughout this. You know, we, we've had that experience of working together uh, for a while now. When Laura got elected and then George, uh, basically right from the start, uh, we had a, a great uh, working relationship and, and really friendship uh, that uh, is a, a great bond uh, for the three of us. And I really appreciate that uh, friendship and that partnership. And I think it's been a great thing for the region. One thing the three of us have recognized from the start is that we are one region, downstate region. We represent collectively 4.5 million people, and we we have so many things uh, in in common uh, between our three counties, uh, and we've worked together on a number of different issues that have uh, brought us together because we share them in common. When municipalities and governments and small businesses even were being attacked uh, through uh, cyber attacks, uh, we put together a cybersecurity summit. We work together to protect our taxpayers and doing shared procurement. Uh, we did a uh, initiative to purchase uh, law enforcement police vehicles that saved a significant amount of money, not only for our counties, but uh, for other municipalities that were able to join uh, along with us in that effort. And when the governor began the discussions on reopening our regional economy, uh, he turned to uh, myself and Laura and George to work with uh, New York City uh, on the plan and the effort to, to make that uh, happen. And of course, uh, a very important issue that impacts our, our taxpayers here that we were able to take action on yesterday uh, is something that we worked on together and that's providing some temporary property tax relief uh, for our taxpayers. So yesterday I announced uh, that we would be effectively extending the date uh, by which taxpayers could uh, make that payment to July 15th, the 45 day extension uh, in line essentially with uh, what uh, uh, George has done in Westchester County and similar to what Laura has done in Nassau with school taxes. And, and in doing that, I again relied on Laura, relied on George, had communications with them. And that's just how we've uh, been able to, to uh, that's how we've done things, that's how we've uh, been able to make our way through uh, this uh, leaning on one another and communicating with one another and sharing ideas and really learning from one another. And that's the same approach that we've taken as, as we move towards uh, Memorial Day weekend. And you know, we know this is an important uh, time for us. Uh, people have been cooped up in their homes. Uh, they have been uh, socially distancing, wearing face coverings, doing things that we, 
we didn't imagine doing just uh, a few months ago, uh, but that have been uh, that have become part of our uh, way of life, how we operate in this new normal. And uh, we have effectively flattened the curve. The public doing this work, uh, they have flattened the curve. And as we move towards uh, phase one reopening of our economy, uh, we understand that, that people need to have outlets. They need the ability to be out and to, um, to do things with themselves, their families, their, with their kids. Uh, and that's why uh, reopening uh, beaches or opening up our beaches Memorial Day weekend and doing it in a safe way with protocols in place makes so much sense. And in doing this, again, we relied on one another, worked together to develop safety protocols and plans, shared those uh, plans. Uh, and we are, again, working together uh, regionally uh, to uh, provide something that I think is really important. Uh, for us. We need things for kids to do, but uh, this is also an important message that, that we can begin to reopen and do it in a safe way. Um, we know we have to reopen our economy. We know the economic devastation that exists out there, uh, but we all believe that we can reopen our economy uh, now with everything that we have learned and the things that we have been doing and the safety protocols that we are putting in place, that businesses are putting in place, and we can do that uh, in a safe way, and we must do that. Uh, so reopening and opening our beaches this week is, is important to all of us. And of course, there were some hard choices we had to make. We, we know that because of uh, COVID-19 and, and the situation that we're in, there's a limited capacity. Uh, as a result of that, uh, not only did we have to put those safety procedures in place, uh, we had to say that, um, for, for those capacity reasons that we need to prioritize uh, these facilities for our residents. And that's why uh, we put in a resident only restriction uh, in Suffolk County. This isn't about um, any municipality or, or uh, any issue with any other uh, municipality. Uh, this is about doing what makes sense. Uh, and, and again, uh, doing this in a way that uh, we share those ideas and, and uh, really communicate with one another in an effective way. So we're doing that. Uh, we're going to go through this weekend. We're going to see uh, what we experience. Um, I'm sure we'll be having a call uh, after this to uh, uh, communicate with one another and maybe commiserate a little bit about uh, those experience, experiences and learn uh, from what happens over the weekend and take those lessons and and make improvements. And that's that's what we've been doing uh, from the very beginning of this crisis. And frankly, it's what we've been doing uh, since the three of us have been in office together as county executives. And it really uh, uh, makes it uh, a true pleasure uh, to be able to uh, to work in this job, to know that I have great regional partners. And, and with that, uh, I wanna introduce one of those great regional partners, uh, our Nassau County Executive and my friend, Laura Curran. County Executive, good to be with you. So nice to be with you, Steve. Uh, thank you for inviting us to join you. And I just want to echo what you were saying. It is reassuring to have partners like you and George uh, right in our region. I mean, I remember speaking with George when he was getting those first cases in Westchester County. And uh, I speak with you, Steve, regularly as well. Um, getting through the surge, now we're past that point, uh, we've been on the downslope for a long time. We see the numbers continue to go down. And in some ways it becomes more complicated. When you're in the surge, you are 100% focused on public health, on helping the hospitals maintain some kind of capacity, get the resources, the PPE, the ventilators, that they all hands on deck. And now as we begin to open up, as the healthcare crisis is still with us, but is beginning to lessen and subside, and we're seeing that the numbers of hospitalization, the number of deaths, the percentage of those being tested, testing positive, continuing to go down, the numbers going in the right direction. Now we have the part uh, where we're together, putting together the pieces back into some kind of new normal, whatever our new normal is. And um, talking to you, Steve, and collaborating, you know, we're one region here on Long Island is incredibly helpful. You're a wonderful partner. And I would say the same thing for George. We're three suburban counties. We're downstate. We're relatively dense compared to the rest of the state, except for the cities. We have a lot in common. And so to have partners like you two 
is incredibly reassuring and it makes my job easier. So, so I want to thank you both for that. We were friends before and I think we're going <laughs> to be stronger now after we've been through this together. Um, you mentioned about beaches. I think everyone is really excited to have their beaches open finally for, for Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if the weather's going to cooperate, but mm -hmm. we will be ready. We will be ready on Long Island, whether it's Nassau or Suffolk, we'll be ready to uh, make sure we have the 50% capacity that enjoy our beautiful beaches uh, in a way that also mitigates risk. I also want to remind everyone, people keep asking, when are you going to open the parks? Our parks, our county parks have been open throughout the pandemic. Remain open. Um, playgrounds are off limits at the moment. Obviously, we're not doing any soccer games and baseball games and lacrosse right now. That will come later. Um, but people, I encourage them to get outside, enjoy the beautiful weather, enjoy the sunshine here. I'm also encouraging the state to open uh, those nonprofit gardens. We have beautiful gardens here Old Westbury Gardens, uh, Planting Fields, ba Bailey's Arboretum. Those are the best places practice social distancing, I think that they should be in the essential category, just like our parks are. Um, I'm speaking constantly. I just got off a call with um, our Floral Park and our Stewart Manor representatives and chambers. I'm talking to business people all the time. I was on, I was on a call with realtors this morning about what their concerns are. I'm talking to the construction industry. People are ready. People who run businesses, who have make payroll every Every, every couple of weeks, they're problem solvers. They know how to get back and they know how to do it in the safest way possible. So uh, we're in constant communication with the state. Um, I think some of these metrics that we have to meet, the seven metrics, uh, I, I, I believe there is some room for some recalibration there. So working closely with the state on that. Uh, I believe that our, as you said, Steve, our residents have done a fantastic job. They stayed home down, they flatten the curve, they get it, they're smart. When we send fire marshals out, when we, we get a, we've gotten well over 2,000 complaints about you know, establishments that shouldn't be open or things that are too many people, whatever it may be. Out of the you know, maybe 2,500 complaints that we've got, we've given maybe a couple dozen violations. People get it. When you go and you explain to them what the rules are in a polite way, they understand, they get it. Um, I am very uh, concerned about people being off about what this is doing to our economy, about obviously what it's doing to our own budgets. That's a whole other story we can talk about later. But the sooner we can start cranking up the engine of the economy again, I think the better off it will be. I'm excited about phase one, uh, the categories of phase one, construction, curbside, retail. Those are practices that are happening in other sectors. So we should allow them to happen uh, if possible. They have, they come with minimal risk. So we'll, Continue to practice the social distancing. People get the message about the masks and the face covering. By and large, from what I see, people really are doing the right thing. So I am, I am very eager to reopen. Um, you mentioned about taxpayer relief. Uh, you and I, we're on a little bit different schedules, you and I, Steve, when it right. comes to collection. But I asked the governor to uh, do a three-week delay in the collection of property taxes. And he said, yes, so that was good. And just this morning, I signed legislation to waive penalties further for late payment. So we'll, we're doing all that we can while managing our own budgets to mm -hmm. make sure taxpayers can be protected as well. Great. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate it. I, I said I love that Bill Tory uh, uh, banner <laughs> you've got uh, back there from the Islanders. Of yeah. course, uh, uh, George, uh, you, I don't think you're an Islanders fan. Rangers uh, all the way, my friend. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We still love you. <laughs> it is great to have you on the call. And Laura is right. Um, you know, you really were the epicenter of this um, uh, on the on the East Coast uh, at, at the start of this. And so really everyone uh, here was looking to you. And uh, again, I was grateful that uh, you were there in that leadership role because we could turn to you and, and talk to you about this. And it's been helpful to us as as things shifted uh, to Long Island. So George, thank you for everything you've been doing and, and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you, Steve, and thank you, Laura, both <clears throat> your terrific partners in all of this. And even though the Long Island sound uh, is in between us and maybe the Rangers and the Islanders, we have a lot more in common and it's a, it's a tremendous help for us here in, uh, you know, in our county to, to be able to consult with you. I spoke with Steve uh, within the last week uh, on beach protocol 
and he was kind enough to share with us uh, a detailed analysis of how Suffolk is going about the process of dealing with its beach management issues. Laura and I have talked about tax policy and, and the, the similarities of trying to deal with counties that have lots of villages in them and towns and the, the jurisdictions. So I've benefited greatly and quite frankly, I've stolen some of your best ideas. Uh, I haven't proclaimed that they were my ideas, but at least uh, we're able to benefit from the shared uh, experiences that we have. And I do think it's important. And you know, the governor has mentioned this more than once in his uh, consultation with Governor Lamont of Connecticut and Governor Murphy of New Jersey, where, where we are in Westchester, we're basically adjacent to these two other states as well. And, and we absolutely believe that a regional approach is the way we have to go in these things. It is, uh, the average person doesn't see the dotted lines between our governments quite as uh, profoundly as we do because we have to run a specific institution. In my corporate days at various times of my career, I officed out of Connecticut and out of New Jersey, out of Manhattan as well. So uh, I recognize that our economies are interconnected uh, as well as uh, the policies that we face. And when we face a problem as New York metropolitan area, we can't put up walls between us and we have to try to figure out ways to work through it. So I'm, I'm appreciative of that relationship. We did in fact, you know, have the first uh, detectable outbreak of COVID uh, in the region, even before New York City had any significant numbers. Uh, but we've come a long way in Westchester. We were at one point with a peak of about 12,000 active cases. We're down to under 2,000 active cases. And, and we determined activity to be people who have been identified as positive with COVID that are less than two weeks uh, from their test date and uh, information because it's in that two week incubation period that they're subject to potentially becoming ill and, and worse. Uh, so even though we've had over 30 some odd thousand cases as each of you have, uh, we have under 2000 right now that are active cases, that's good news. Our hospitalization rate is down to about a third of what it was at its peak. At its peak, 1200 people were hospitalized in our county, well below the number of beds that we had available. So that's good news. Uh, but now that we're under 400 hospitalized, that, that is helpful news to us as well. And, and the fatality situation uh, is, uh, is tragic at every level. We have one, one death is, is not a statistic, it's, it's a human being. But we have now uh, reached a point at which our overnight fatalities are much less than they were six, seven weeks ago, uh, which is a good sign, shows us we're moving in the right direction. That has allowed us to do a few things uh, relative to recreation, I think similar to what the other counties have done uh, in our general area. And, and we started, as we all do, with an incremental approach. We have six public golf courses. We reopened them to a weekend over a three weekend period of time. We've had no impact on our infection rate by having done that. Uh, we opened up one of our uh, events, Bicycle Sundays on the Bronx River Parkway uh, three weeks ago. And we've run it uh, over that period of time. And we've had no uh, incidents that that has led to the spread. So now, uh, as with uh, Nassau County and with Suffolk, we're opening our two, two of our county beaches this weekend. The third beach we have, which is our largest, Glen Island, is uh, part of the complex that we turned over to the state for uh, advanced drive-through testing. So we don't have Glen Island to work with as part of our inventory, but Playland Beach and Croton Point Park Beach, one on the Hudson River, one on the Sound Shore, will be open this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And uh, we're following you know, similar protocols to what uh, you know, both of you are doing. And we're going to try to maintain uh, a 50% uh, occupancy at the beach, which is tough because the demand is going to be strong. We're going to have to try to manage that with personnel and with uh, sweet reasonability. And we also want to make sure that uh, we enforce mask wearing and uh, uh, separation uh, that, that's appropriate socially. And these are difficult things to do. We did not, as a society, wear masks for, for prior years, colds, flus, and so forth. That is an adjustment we're making because of the pandemic. Uh, social distancing is something that was normally part of our lexicon. When you're in public office, when you run for public office, social distancing is about the last thing you want to do. You want to greet people warmly and develop relationships between them. I remember the first time the three of us met in New York City during the time when Laura and I were each running for these positions and, and Steve was already an incumbent. And uh, we met for the first time, the three of us, and it was you know, uh, up close and personal in a picture. Now we're on a Zoom camera because that's what you have to do uh, at this age. But we're trying to respond to that, uh, we think in an intelligent way. Our testing here has been very good. We've tested 13% of the population of Westchester County, 130,000 tests. Our population is less than both Nassau and Suffolk by a bit. And so even the similar number of tests represent a higher percentage. But we know that we're not gonna control the spread. 
uh, unless we understand uh, where it is and track it through. Now, as much as we've opened uh, the two beaches for this weekend, there are things that we have, have announced that would be closed. We have a terrific uh, amusement park, Playland Amusement Park. Laura had the opportunity to join us, come across the, the sound and join us for a brunch one Sunday morning. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we're gonna have to close that park at least through July and perhaps for the whole season because social distancing at an amusement park, sanitizing rides is near impossible. Uh, we're closing our July 4th and July 3rd fireworks, two major fireworks shows we have here in Westchester because realistically when people go to see fireworks, they cluster close together and there's no way to guarantee that if we, if we perform those things. And we have a series of ethnic festivals that we have uh, every week at the Ketsuko Dam Plaza, which is a beautiful environment. And uh, by definition, you get close. Uh, one week is Italian week, the next week Polish, the next week Asian, there's food, there's dance, there's music. And unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to enjoy any of that um, uh, over the course of this summer. So we postpone or cancel those at least through the mid-July period. And we may have to extend that depending on what's happening. The most important thing I think in all of this, and we've extended our tax, line, tax deadline date, done a business survey, and we're involved in PPE uh, distribution and so forth. All of these things, as, as Steve, you said right up front, there's no roadmap for this. And each of us have nuances to our, uh, to our jurisdictions that are a bit different. And you try to learn best case scenario. If, if, if Laura or Steve are doing something intelligent that works, we'll try to uh, uh, mirror it. If there's something we're doing, we share it with them some value. But at the end of the day, we're trying to rise to a moment that none of us have experienced. And, and I'll just close my general comments by thinking of my mom and dad, both of whom were gone, both of whom were Depression era kids and World War II era young people. And my dad was overseas and my mom was here stateside as young people. And when they would tell me stories when I was growing up in the late 50s, 60s and so forth about what it was like, you know, I'd hear the stories, but I couldn't relate to them. I didn't experience that the sacrifice of going through the Depression. They were both working class kids and uh, you know, had, to, uh, had to go through a lot of sacrifice. And now all of a sudden, I, I think we understand what it is. We have an economic problem, we have a health problem. And now our generation, and for me a little later in life than you guys, we, we have to rise to the same occasion that my parents' generation did. And the real question that I've said publicly here in Westchester County, are we our father's sons? Are we our mother's daughters? Do we have in us the same resolve of purpose that they did to get through our test the way they did? And I think the answer is yes, but that's what's happening every single day in these counties and every place else. And it's, it's not to, to let this descend into politics. It's not to let this descend into name calling or factionalism, but to try to find that basic unity that we all have as Americans and figure out how much sacrifice and how much opening and how much do we progress toward pulling back out of this. We will get through this. I think we're all confident that we will, but it isn't something that was done in a day. The depression didn't end in three months. World War II wasn't one in four months. And I think that's what we're facing. We're facing a, a slog that we're gonna get through, we're gonna succeed, and it's gonna take it day by day. And I'm proud to be a partner with you all in doing that process. George, thank you very much. And I think your, your words were uh, spot on there uh, at the end, you know, and it's uh, I'm mindful of the fact that you know, this is uh, this year, the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. And you think about how this virus uh, has ruthlessly attacked the greatest generation. Um, and as you said, your parents and uh, living through the, the Great Depression and winning World War II, um, you know, why they have that, that name of the greatest generation, uh, you're 100% right. This is, this is a test for our generation. And uh, I believe that, that we will rise to the occasion. I, I believe people have been doing that uh, in flattening the curve. And I think moving forward, uh, we're going to continue to do that. And we'll do it by working together. And I think this call, uh, you know, we're, we're on calls together a lot, uh, but the, the public usually doesn't get to see it. Uh, they're, they're getting to see us uh, working together, and, and this is the way that it's supposed to be. So I really thank you, George and Laura. Do you mind if we take a few questions? Not at all, but it, just one more thing. In the spirit of working together, um, I want everyone to know that Nassau and Suffolk, you know, because we're considered the one region, we're working together on a survey of business owners, and we encourage anyone who owns a business on Long Island to go to hostra.edu slash economic impact. It takes 10 minutes. Nassau County did this in, in March. We got a lot of great response and it'll help us know what to ask for more specifically from the federal government 
and it'll give us a real snapshot of what our businesses and nonprofits are facing right now. So Steve, I want to thank you and your partnership with this. We're getting it out to all of our chambers. I know you are too. Um, and, and big, small businesses, whatever, please go um, get it out to your networks, whoever's listening, and uh, it'll help us help to recover more quickly and more, more deftly. Couldn't agree more, Laura. Thank you. That's it's another example of a great partnership there in, in doing this economic impact analysis. That's the survey will help inform that. And this is really going to give us a, a good basis for beginning this long term recovery, which is what we'll be uh, entering now. So are there uh, any questions? Oh, that's right. Um, I have a question. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Although I'm telling you, all the liquor stores have done well. <laughs> Just uh, ask people to mute their questions. phones. Please just keep your phone on mute. Although liquor stores are deemed essential. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> Um, this is uh, Chris Eberhard from the Journal News in Westchester. Um, I just had two questions for, uh, for you guys. Um, so first question, uh, I know the governor, when he talks about downstate, I always kind of group in Westchester, Long Island, and New York City. Um, can you explain to us, um, you know, even though Westchester and Long Island are much different from New York City, can you explain how um, New York City impacts how you guys can open up certain things? Sure. Um, you know, I, I just like I speak to Steve and George, I've developed a phone friendship with, with Bill de Blasio. Are we able to do it this way or this way? And, uh, you know, we were talking about beach strategy, for instance, and uh, they, he has density issues that we have in the suburbs. I understand his reasoning for keeping his beaches closed for now. And I think both Steve and I decided to, you know, just we, make, we made the decision that our beaches which our taxpayers pay for should have priority access to their beach. We're, we're limiting our beach bar to residents. Um, but, you know, having those lines of communication opening and staying open and having this, while we may not agree, while we may not be doing the same things, the fact that we're talking to each other and understanding each other will be very helpful going forward as we begin to repatch our reality and create our new normal or a new abnormal as Scott Reckler called it. Um, new York City is obviously a very important part of our region. A lot of people who have jobs in New York City live in our suburban districts in our suburban um, MTA is the lifeblood. The, uh, the people travel to get where they need to go and it's important that we continue to communicate. And while New York City might have a different timeline and different needs and have reality we are still part of one very important region and i just uh, sorry just a quick let me question. just um as well ahead, chris. chris is in our neighborhood in westchester um <clears throat> we've also made the decision to um limit our, our uh, beaches on opening to to westchester residents the the practical reality is the two beaches that we're opening are the smaller two of the three beaches that we have and we want to make sure that Westchester residents and our urban folks uh, in Port Chester, in Yonkers, in Mount Vernon have an, have a, an available access uh, to, to the water on a, what will be a, a hot, busy weekend. We don't know that we can guarantee that if it's open to all people from other areas. And we may have the very people that are uh, living in the county being frozen out just by uh, the population size. As it is, we're going to have to reduce the, uh, the attendance. So if you had, for the sake of this discussion, a thousand people on a beach, we have to limit it to 500. And if we limit it to 500, we'll open it up to Fairfield County and to uh, other places. It would be very difficult for us to do that. That is not for us a permanent decision going forward. That's a decision we made right now because the New York City beaches are closed. And if the New York City beaches are closed and there's demand from the Bronx, which is probably where we'd get it from, that would come north, it could easily eliminate Westchester people being able to enjoy a Westchester beach. Uh, as the city makes decisions to open up their beaches, if they open up some, the one that probably affects us most is Orchard Beach in the Bronx. If they were to open up Orchard Beach and, and have the, the bulk of Bronx residents use that beach, then it might be a bit different up here. But we'll, we'll adjust our policies based on the realities on the ground and what we see over the next uh, 72 hours, but starting, starting tomorrow for the next four days, and then, and then look to see what we'll do the following weekend. 
Yeah, and I, I, I would agree. Look, I would love to see uh, New York City beaches uh, open, but every municipality has to make their own determination. And for us, as uh, George said and, and Laura, um, when you're dealing with capacity issues because of COVID-19, there's automatically limited capacity, reduced capacity. And then you factor in that uh, not everyone is opening their facilities. Um, you know, we have to prioritize uh, so that uh, the Suffolk County residents who are, are, are paying to staff up these beaches and to uh, do all the things that uh, we, the additional things we're going to need to do to be able to operate safely, uh, that uh, they're able to access those beaches this weekend. And as George said, uh, I would agree, this is not a, a permanent uh, a policy. Uh, this is a policy that we put in place under an emergency order in, in this emergency. Uh, and we'll be re reviewing it on an ongoing basis, depending on what happens uh, throughout the region. But my view of this has been from the very beginning, kids are home from school, um, families are home, kids are not as they normally are throughout the month of June till the end in, in school. Uh, the idea that, that kids and families are not going to be flocking to the beaches, I think uh, is just unrealistic. And we need to do this in a way that uh, welcomes them safely right from the start, which is why we're opening. Um, just to piggyback off of um, everybody's comments, uh, you know, do you see this as almost like a litmus test for uh, the rest of the summer plans, uh, you know, to see how these three days work and then kind of make plans moving forward on what kind of summer activities you can open up? I think every new step that we take is sort of uh, a, a test and we need to look at it and observe and learn from it. Uh, and again, the good news uh, reflected in this call is Hi, know, communicate with one County, another and we're George able Latimer. to uh, you already share know, that information. Westchester County so is experiencing we'll multiple confirmed cases of COVID-19. Can someone can please just mute their phone for um, us, please? Yes, Westchester please. Who's ever on 2912, please our residents your call. And communities Put it on hold. Difficult time. I know this is stressful. However, if we all take George, it's good to hear your voice anyway. We can help keep I get tired of hearing that tape, to be honest with you. On Monday, March 16th, Okay. I was done anyway, Joy. So much for the well-oiled machine in Westchester. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, guys, this is uh, uh, Charles Lane. May I ask a question? Sure. Of course, Charles. Um, uh, so I think I have two questions. The first one being, um, what, can you um, articulate the fear here just a, a little more precisely so I understand it? Is it a fear that uh, the, the people living in the county won't be able to access the beach? Is it a fear that the virus would spread from the city to the counties? What's, what's the actual fear here? It's just a capacity issue. Um, under the state order, you're at a 50% capacity in order to distance people. Um, and then, of course, uh, there are uh, municipalities, obviously New York City is one of them, that are not opening their beaches on the weekend. That would only further exacerbate the capacity issues. So uh, on a temporary basis, it makes sense to ensure that uh, the residents who are, are, are paying for, for those beaches or staffing those beaches uh, have the ability to access them. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Steve. It's not about fear. It's about making sure that since we're at 50%, our residents have priority the ones who pay for it. Perfect. And one more follow-up. Um, is there a reciprocal capacity uh, throttle or threshold that the city could impose on people in the county? For example, you know, people from Nassau can't walk on the sidewalk. There's just too many people from Westchester going to the theater district. Is there, does New York City have a, a similar capacity fear coming from the outer boroughs? I suspect New York City will continue to welcome in the dollars coming from Suffolk County uh, by residents coming in and, and uh, enjoying uh, different activities in the city. And just to be clear, as soon as the city deems it safe to open their beaches, our law sunset is done. Okay, thanks guys. Hi, um, this is Lisa Finn from Patch. I have a question, um, Steve and Laura. Uh, today it seems on the state dashboard that Long Island has dropped another notch down to four out of seven metrics needed to reopen. Can you both speak to that, please? Sure. So this this fourth metric is about 
bed capacity in our hospital. We were over 50%, now 9%. Uh, I am actually having a call with our hospital executive right after this in, at, in a bit to talk about how we address this metric. Uh, but just to be clear, very rarely are have beds. And now that have elective surgery happening, now that more people are feeling confident about going to the hospital and accessing the care that they've been putting off during dark days, we are seeing more people, a lot more non-COVID patients in the hospital. That's a good thing. So uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to address the metric. And I think Laura and I, I think Laura and I would agree. We don't believe, uh, and probably George, we don't believe this is going to be a metric that will hold us back. As Laura mentioned, elective surgeries are coming back in, uh, but uh, this is something that we believe the hospitals will be able to uh, handle, and this will not uh, prevent us from moving into phase one. We will uh, be able to address this. I agree. Okay. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Thanks. Hi, it's Dan Denea from the Times Speaking Record Newspapers. Uh, Steve and Laura, actually, George had mentioned earlier that uh, the fireworks are probably not going to happen uh, in Westchester on July 3rd and 4th. Are you guys, do you guys have the same approach to the fireworks um, in Suffolk and Nassau for uh, the same period? Yeah, unfortunately, we've canceled all of our Eisenhower Park summer events. We have beautiful, like, you know, um, George, you were talking about your Italian night, your Polish night. We have all those, too, and they're a lot of fun. We have great musical concerts and, you know, the 80s night and disco night's a big hit always with thousands of people. Unfortunately, we're not, we've canceled the whole program. Yeah, right now, any of those mass gathering events just um, just don't make sense and from a public health perspective. And from an economic perspective, because uh, we know that reopening our economy safely and being able to sustain that is directly connected to our ability uh, to keep that uh, uh, curve flat and to uh, contain the spread of the virus. So uh, opening back up to, to mass gathering events would just undermine uh, our, our goals to, to reopen the economy and, and get, uh, get people back to work. So is there a date when you might consider that, or is that sort of off the table indefinitely until the numbers and everything else moves in the right direction? You know, I think, I think we can be nimble. Go ahead, Laura. Yeah, I, I think we can be nimble. Um, we've proven that we can be, and we can readjust and recalibrate. So I would just say nothing formal at the moment, but stay tuned. Yeah, I think if we've learned anything during this crisis, it's that you better be prepared for, uh, you know, changes and twists and turns and things you didn't expect. And, and uh, you better be open to uh, just really uh, adapting quickly. So I, I think I, I would agree with Laura. And I think George probably has the same feeling. Um, you know, we'll, we'll take this day by day. We're planning ahead, of course, uh, but we're also uh, prepared to pivot and change where it makes sense. And let me just add, uh, you know, from our perspective, we're in constant dialogue with the other elected officials in our county. We have three times a week a municipal call. I'm sure there's similar versions every place where we have uh, our collected town supervisors, village mayors, city mayors, or their representatives, and our members of the, our board of legislators on the call. And we discuss some of these issues. So these aren't unilateral decisions, three of us in a corner office making. Uh, and we look at what are the implications of us taking an action on uh, other players in the game, you know, certain communities. We have the city of Yonkers, 200,000 people. That's a pretty big municipal government within our, um, within our zone, a lot smaller than some of the towns in Nassau and Suffolk, much, much larger populations uh, like, uh, you know, Brookhaven and uh, Hempstead and so forth. But uh, the bottom line is, since this isn't, since there is no roadmap here, we discuss it amongst ourselves. We try to think it through, we reach out to the business community, talk to the labor community, talk to the nonprofit community, and then make decisions based out of the best thinking out of all of that uh, conversation. Hi, Steve Burns here from WCBS 880. Uh, just wanted to ask about the enforcement of uh, the residents only at beaches, how that enforcement is going to work. Is it gonna be uh, some amount of authorities at the entrance to each beach checking driver's licenses or anything like that and how the enforcement of capacity rules on the beach itself are going to work? Well, first on this one, uh, we're gonna try our best 
to um, have enough of our uh, key people in, in points of interdiction uh, when folks come, uh, come off of the highway and, and approach either of the two beaches. Uh, and so that if they want to go onto the beach, uh, they'll, they'll see signage that will tell them the rules and uh, also indicate that uh, we are going to control the amount of people that come through the beach. We have a couple of entrances on each of these beaches that really control the flow. And uh, we're gonna task our key uh, parks department people with making the, the subjective judgment. You're not gonna have a, a, a clicker that's gonna be the absolute rule of it. And to look to see when the beach has reached a point of, um, of stress. There happens to be large parking lot facilities at both of these two beach locations in Westchester. So the parking lot uh, doesn't have to be filled in order for the beach to be filled. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be touch and go. And we're gonna to try to use um, uh, enforcement that is done uh, you know, with a great degree of sensitivity. We, we recognize that um, you know, people have come for at some distance in our county. To, uh, to enjoy a beach and we, we don't want to uh, make them angry unnecessarily, but, but people do have to understand that this is a close call by which the state gave us the right to open these beaches. They could have easily not given us this authority. It's within their authority to keep them closed. We want to succeed at it and we need the help of the people of our county and the other counties I'm sure do as well to help us succeed at it. And you know, it might frustrate an individual desire to do something but the greater good is to make sure the beaches can be managed and therefore stay open. Because I'll tell you, if it gets out of control everywhere, it'll shut down. And, and that's not what we want to do, but that's what we'll be forced to do if people don't understand that, that we're still in the middle of a contagion here. Last question. Uh, let me uh, just add, I don't know if Laura wanted to say anything on that, but we will be checking uh, licenses or uh, what we have green key cards. Uh, for Suffolk uh, residents. And, you know, again, I, I want to uh, just further elaborate on that. Uh, uh, quite, we'll be on the beach. We have uh, enhanced uh, personnel on the, the beach who, who will be uh, helping to maintain social distancing and indicating when we are approaching uh, the, the beach being uh, at capacity so that we can communicate that back to uh, the people at the booth. We'll have signage. Uh, some distance away and we'll be communicating uh, publicly uh, about when the uh, beach closes. Uh, but to the earlier point about New York City and, and uh, welcoming people uh, here uh, and into the city, you know, I think it's very important to be clear again, this has nothing to do with New York City residents. This is everything to do with uh, the emergency situation and the capacity. Uh, just as uh, New York City will continue to welcome uh, people from Nassau and Suffolk and, and Westchester, uh, we will continue to welcome New York City residents out to Suffolk County. We have many uh, uh, second homeowners in Suffolk County from New York City. Uh, and to the mayor's credit, he has uh, indicated he understands uh, our decision now uh, to uh, make our beaches resident only uh, at this moment while he uh, continues to uh, keep his uh, beaches closed for the time being. So I just want to make that point very clear. All right, last question. Hey, Steve, it's Rochelle at Newsday. How are you? I'm good, Rochelle. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, are you going to be providing the numbers during this call? Yes, yeah. Uh, as soon as we uh, end the questions uh, for the county executives, we'll be moving to the numbers. <laughs> All right, then I will feed my question. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll jump in that last one uh, before we sign off. So very similarly, we'll be checking, uh, we have the leisure card in Nassau County or we'll be checking licenses and we're, we're having parking every other spot. So our parking will be at half capacity. That will ensure, help us to ensure capacity, half capacity at the beaches, uh, but you know, our law enforcement, we're going to have cops there. We're going to have public safety officers. We're going to have parks personnel. We haven't had to be, we don't want to be heavy handed. I've directed our law enforcement that, you know, people get it. People are smart. Sometimes, sometimes they just need a little, but we're not looking to do serious, strong enforcement. Uh, we're not, you know, if you come in a car, we're not going to check every single person in the car, their driver's license. It'll just be the driver of the car. We trust people, they've been doing fantastic, and we know that they're gonna be do, continue to do fantastic through the weekend and beyond. All right, Laura, thank you very much. And George, thank you. Um, 
good luck this weekend and i know we'll be we'll be talking soon all right steve george thank you very thank you thanks steve thanks laura appreciate being with you bye bye thank you all right well thank you everyone